Now to him which is able to do exceedingly abundantly above that which you dare to ask or think according to the working power that worketh in you, according to the vision that you have about him. Somebody shout, God increase my vision. Let me see what I've never seen before. Let me see beyond what a man could ever show me. Let me see beyond what a book could ever read for me. Let me see beyond what a video could ever reveal to me. Let me see beyond beyond any study could ever give me. Let me see beyond what any man could ever impart on my life. One time I was in Chicago. I'd gone for a meeting in a church. I was teaching about the God of all possibility. And I got a word of knowledge. And I said, there's a person in this room. You're paralyzed from your waist to down. And there was a man seated on my right. And he had been paralyzed for more than five years. I think he's got in an accident. So he couldn't walk and stuff. And then, I prayed for the man and he stood up bishop and the man walked healed the pastors took me for lunch and told me never to come back to the church to ever preach and I'll tell you why they told me they don't believe they don't believe that God heals all sicknesses even after a paralyzed man had walked, they chased me out of that church and told me they don't believe that God heals all sicknesses. The man that chased me out of that church had a degree in theology in a very prestigious Bible school in a certain nation. There's a difference between theology and theophany. The knowledge of him and the experience of him. Those are two different things. Those are two different things. Am I against, am I against Bible school? No, I'm not against Bible school. I recommend it. But we have a problem of giving language to the experiences that we have with God that sometimes don't fit man's academic exegesis of him and then we start to become strange not because we are wrong but because it quite does not match the man's theology and to them some would rather be right and keep their theology than agree with God put yourself in the shoes of Paul with the Greeks Athenians the Bible says that the Jews seek for a sign, but the Greeks seek after what? Wisdom. You, you can come flying, but if you cannot demonstrate, the, you cannot, if you cannot give a distinctive mark of wisdom, they cannot take him. The Bible says the world in its wisdom knew not God. They were so wise that they did not know God. And then he chose the foolishness of the gospel that he might demystify the mystery of wisdom. I have seen men who have gotten lost with wisdom and become indifferent to the way of the spirit because they think you need to have a reason and an explanation and the evidence of everything before you approve it to be true. But the God you're dealing with is telling the children of God that I'm sending you to a land flowing with milk and honey and there are no cows and bees. And they have to believe him. That is the God you believed. Who speaks the things that be not as though they are. No kind of science can explain it. When God says that I have chosen you and there is nothing that can explain where you're going to come or how you're going to do it. But you have to believe that he has chosen you. You might not have the qualification. You might not have the credentials. You might not have the education. You might not even look the part. You probably look a bit more pragmatic and dogmatic from the order of what God would have called. Reminds you of a man who slapped another. Pa, from whence did God bypass me? 
to talk to you. Because in his own wisdom, God could not bypass him and talk to this man. Wow. Reminds me of a man, the disciples of Jesus Christ. They come to him and they say, we found a man casting out devils in your name and we forbid him because he does not follow with us. We don't see him in the prayer meeting. He's not in our intercession class. He's not in our school. He doesn't come to, to, to the organization. He's not part of this movement. He's not under the umbrella, but he's casting out devils. So he must be wrong. The question should have been, how did you teach this one? Because in the order of things, we understood how you taught us. You spoke. You explained. The Bible says, without a parable, speak he not unto them. But when he was alone with his disciples, the Bible says he expounded. But this man is not in the expounding. He's not where they're speaking. But he knows how to cast out devils. The question should have been, what is that dimension of instruction that goes beyond what you have given us already, but can still approve a man to be a minister even when he is not fitting the status quo of our expectation. But that's a question the disciples didn't ask. And Jesus, from where they could understand, he said, if he's not against us, he's for us. Let the man be. But that didn't mean that that was the last time Jesus continued instructing that man. Ladies and gentlemen, God is not subject to one dimension of your teaching. God can appear through a rock. God can appear through it. anything. Don't, don't limit God to the... And that's the problem. See, Moses, if, if you followed Moses' revelation, you'd think you'd only need to come through a burning bush. And then he comes to Elijah and he's in the, the fire comes, but he's not in that fire. So if you were stuck on how he appears... To Moses through a burning bush and then you put a monument there you might miss him because that day even when the fire passed the earthquake passed he was not in that earthquake and I've seen men taking off shoes before a fire in which he was not he was actually just passing through and the still small voice came and they would say that's not God because by Moses he came through a burning God appears to a man and in his own humility he says God was here and I knew not I knew not it's one of the things that I fear most to assume that I know a God that I don't know for him to come and go without me understanding that he was here because he did not come in my expectation. I was indifferent to, to his coming because I only knew one file, one way, one dimension of function, one paradigm of interpretation. And, and I'm assuming that that's the only way he can appear. If he does not appear this way, then he is not God. And then we miss him. There is evidence that many are missing him. There is evidence that many are missing him. Are they wise? Yes. Are they gifted? Yes. Do they have understanding? Yes. And Jesus says, oh, I thank you, Father. Because you've hidden this to the prudent. What an oxymoron. If a prudent man foreseeth evil and he hideth himself, how then would God hide the deepest move of him? Without prudence was the spirit. We thought every man in his own prudence had a distinctive eye. And that is true. Prudence gives you a certain distinction. But without a certain consecration of the heart, you miss the deeper instruction. He finds Elijah in a cave. What are you doing here? All your prophets are slain. Only I am left. God tells him, Elijah, I have 7,000 men who have not bowed to bow. You don't have a clear vision. You assume that you're a prophet, but you don't see like you should. You should not be here. That's why God is asking him, what are you doing here? What is God trying to do? He's trying to elevate Elijah to another level of vision. 
to see what he could not see before. That is why immediately when he leaves that cave and then he sees Elisha, he immediately puts his mount on him. He can discern that this is another prophet of the 7,000 that were hidden from my vision. Chances are he bypassed them every day. And because he did not carry a vision of their existence, perhaps he assumed that's where God was, that he was the only prophet. God help us. I said God help us. Who is God? And this is what I realized. That the true consecration of our vision in the knowledge of God is sometimes the true definition of the death that we must die. That is why Paul on his way to Damascus persecuting the church God knew this man even even with salvation he needed a distinctive vision but to give him the right vision I have to kill the vision that he had a Pharisee of the stock of Benjamin a Hebrew of Hebrews circumcised on the eighth day a stating the law a Pharisee as touching the righteousness in the law, blameless. How would he save such a man? Because everything in his life had become an idol. Being a Jew had become an idol. Being of the tribe of Benjamin had become an idol. Fulfilling the law had become an idol. He, Paul was blameless concerning the righteousness which is in the law. He didn't have one sin. That man had lived he said in concerning the righteousness which is in the law I was blameless why would he need a savior why would he need a savior if he was, if he was not without sin because God had another definition of sin it was in similitude of Adam why children are born sinners but in, because of their ignorance God takes them to heaven he winks for every man with understanding, he calls us to be saved. That is why he will not judge the man who did not know him. But that one which had the opportunity to know him. Are you following what I'm saying? God strikes him blind. Because this vision he has, it can't find purpose yet. He needs the right vision. But in there is a death that comes with that consecration. And in Acts 26, he gives of that account. When Jesus appears to him, he said, who are you, Lord? He says, Paul, Paul, Saul, Saul, why did you persecute me? Acts 26. He asked him, who are you, Lord? That means he knows the Lord. This is the Lord, but who? He understands this is Lordship, but who? He's unknown yet. And he tells him, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. And he tells him, but arise and stand up. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. To make thee a minister. And a witness of, both, of those things which you have seen. That means there was a vision in there taking place. But that's not a vision he can explain to anybody. Of those things which you have seen. And those things in which I will appear to you. So, ha, yeah, 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 yeah. so some people think, oh, because he saw the vision of Jesus, therefore Jesus has appeared. But Jesus said, there are even things in which I'll appear to you. I will not come in that vision, you know me, but I can appear, appear in something else and still reveal myself to you. Don't limit me to that vision you know or you have seen on a Christian movie. I'm not limited. My goodness. This rock walked with them, Musumba, for many years. And they drank. But they did not know that they were walking with Jesus. He chose to be a rock. He chose to be a rock one day. Who ever knew that the Lord would humble himself and take the form of a rock? For this reason, I have appeared to you that you might be a witness and minister of those things which you have seen. That means you can
can only be a minister and a witness of the vision you have about me, says the Lord. You can never function beyond the ambits of your vision concerning me. And if it's not yet working, do not deceive yourself. Seek him deeper. Seek him deeper. Seek him deeper. If you feel that it's not enough what you see, break your ego and pride and understand that if it's not working, because everybody in us, everybody who's born again has a consciousness in their spirit, a spiritual time in there that tells you that you are where you're supposed to be or no, or you're not where you're supposed to be. We just sometimes choose to shut it out, but we can tell when we're not living our full potential. Do you agree? But some choose the way of pride and we seek the justification. I thank God for one thing. When I understood this, I have stayed open to God to challenge and change my theology any day. I'm okay. Just promise me that I'm progressing. It might take some wounds. I'm, I will lick them. It might take some cuts and I'll stitch them. But if that's the way of breaking me, break everything you have to break to a point where I do not miss you. Or stay stuck to the monument that I built thinking that that's only as far as you can function. God is bigger than what we assume. 